Hi, it's Angela Hardy here, kinesiologist at Cloud9. I want to talk to you about um, insulin resistance and what that really means. And why for those people who are insulin resistant, the carbs are the devil. Um, sorry, for you, because <laughs> that really sucks. But um, let me just explain to you a little bit about what it means, because this is a term that's been branding about a lot at the moment. People talk a lot about um, a low carb diet, about insulin resistance, about um, you know why people gain weight and where they gain weight with insulin resistance. So I'm going to give you a shortish synopsis of my understanding of how that works. Um, firstly, what you need to know is that when you eat something that is either a carbohydrate or a sugar, um, that carbohydrate or sugar is um, broken down in your body and is made into glucose energy. Now, a lot of people don't really understand what a carbohydrate is and what a sugar is. So let me explain to you. A carbohydrate is absolutely any fruit, vegetable or processed food that has within it the capacity to be broken down into um, glucose energy. So um, fruits like bananas have quite a high level of glucose energy available to the body. They're a carbohydrate. Um, Vegetables are all carbohydrates, but some of them have a much higher level of glucose available to the body than others. So for instance, um, butternut would be much higher glucose energy content than say um, broccoli or um, spinach. Spinach is very low glucose content for the body, but it still has glucose energy available. It still is carbohydrate. Um, something like a potato or anything white except possibly cauliflower, have a very, very high level of glucose energy available. You know, the smoother and the more creamy that vegetable is, more than likely the, the more glucose energy it has available to you. So that's just a rule of thumb. Um, so I actually heard a, a talk once that said that um, a potato is essentially just a ball of sugar. You know, just consider it to be one big ball of sugar. Um, so when they talk about staying away from white foods, this is really why they're talking about staying away from white foods, because white foods have a very high level of sugar available to the body, and they often release their sugar, not always, but they often release their sugar very quickly into the body as well. So when people talk about glycemic index or glycemic load, they're talking about how quickly a food releases its sugar into the body and makes it available for the body to use. So that is what glycemic index is and glycemic load. How quickly food may, is made available as glucose energy for the body to use. So insulin then comes in at this point. So you, you take, uh, let's say, a slice of toast. You digest that slice of toast starting in the mouth with the um, uh, saliva and then into the stomach. And as you digest it, so it extracts the glucose from that and puts it into the bloodstream. And now the body has to do something with that glucose energy because actually it's not great for it to have a very high level of sugar floating around in the blood. So it says, okay, quickly, we need a way of um, making use of this glucose energy. And what it does is it produces a hormone called insulin in order to, uh, in order to place that glucose energy in a place in the body. Um, insulin is produced by the pancreas. In a, in a normal healthy human being, you'll produce exactly the right amount of insulin to deal with the amount of sugar that's floating around in your blood. And that's all good. Um, if you are diabetic, then your pancreas is probably producing too little insulin or no insulin at all, depending on you know, the stage that you're in. And that means that it doesn't have a hormone available to do something with the sugar that's floating around in the blood. And we know that sugar, too much sugar floating around the blood is not good for you. And so you get um, a problem with diabetes. And so what insulin does is it says to the body, now I'm going to tell you what to do with the sugar. So it says, okay, well, let me go to the muscles and let me tell the muscles, take some of the sugar because that's going to give you energy to work and you're going to have lots of energy to run and to play and, and you know, to, to work and to do whatever it is you need to do. And so it says to the, the muscles, hello, little muscle cell, hello, can you open up, please? I've got some sugar for you. And so it's like a little key in the lock. Insulin goes to the cell and unlocks the cell to open it to accept this glucose energy. And so when, um, when you eat, you get um, glucose going into the muscle and that gives you energy to perform physically. And it also floats around and it goes to the fat cells and it says, look, you know, the muscles are taking all they can. Fat cells open up. I need you to accept some of this glucose energy. And so the fat cells open up and they say, well, come on in and they make 
fat out of the glucose energy. Um, and so while we're busy eating and taking more glucose into the body, so the fat cells are storing more and more energy in the fat cells. They're not releasing energy in order to um, continue to feed the body with glucose energy, which they would do if you weren't eating something. So um, the, the insulin then is the little key to the lock that goes to the cell, opens it up and says, open up and let's get some, some energy into these cells, either muscle cells or fat cells. Now the problem arises when they talk about insulin resistance, what they're talking about is the muscle cell is resistant to allowing the insulin to open it up so that the glucose energy can go in. Which means that the glucose energy is floating around the blood, floating around the blood, the insulin comes and knocks on the wall of the muscle cell, says let me in, let me in, the muscle cell says no, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, and so the, fat, the, 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 the sugar is floating around, floating around in the blood, and so the insulin says, well fine, then let me just go to the fat cells and knock, 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 let me in, let me in, and it says, yes, not a problem, little pig, come on in. And so when you are insulin resistant, you're inclined to be overweight. So you store fat very easily, and you're inclined to be overweight. And it's in this case that the carbs are the devil, because every carb that you eat is getting stored in the fat cell as, um, as, as fat, basically because it can't go into the muscle to be used. Now, what's really interesting about this is that there was a time when um, people would say, well, somebody who's overweight is overweight because they are lazy and they have heart disease because they are lazy and overweight. But the new um, proponents of this whole insulin resistant theory says that, say that that's not actually true. What's more true is that um, you're overweight because you're muscle cells are resistance to insulin and so you're getting the insulin I mean you're getting the fat being pushed into the fat cells and so because your muscle cells are getting very little energy you're also inclined to be lazy because you don't have this massive amount of energy to make you into a long distance runner you've got this very low level of energy in your muscles and when somebody says to you come let's go for a walk you're thinking oh no bugger it I'm tired so in fact what happens is that people who are insulin resistant are more inclined to be fatigued and fat and have heart disease. So, um, you know, what is the answer to insulin resistance? Well, that's a problem because the most important thing that you can do when you're inclined to be insulin resistant is to eat less carbohydrates because it's the carbohydrates that give the type of energy that insulin has to work with in order to put it somewhere in the body to make use of. And so those people who um, talk about high uh, protein diets and low carbohydrate diets are saying that your body's perfectly capable of making use of protein and animal fats um, as well as other fats like olive oil and um, uh, you know maybe sesame oil or peanut oil or whatever the case may be it's perfectly capable of making use of those fats and processing those fats and those proteins through the liver in order to produce energy for your body so what you'll find is that somebody who's insulin resistant that goes on to a high protein diet actually increases the amount of energy that they have because this energy is available to them in a different format. So if you are insulin resistant, you know, the general dietitian's answer to insulin resistance is uh, eat less carbohydrates. Um, but actually there's something else that you can do as well. Um, we talk about then eating a low GI diet. And what that means is that you're eating a diet where the sugar is released slowly into the bloodstream instead of in great masses. And so what you do is that you're asking the, the pancreas to produce small amounts of insulin at a time so that your body can make use of that energy lip slowly, 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 instead of producing this massive whack of insulin, which then brings the level of sugar down very quickly. So let me talk about that a little bit. This is a problem that I've had in my life. So I know quite a lot about the low GI diet, actually. What happens if you eat something that is high in sugar, even if your pancreas is working fine, is that that very high level of glucose energy gets put into the blood all at once. And so your body says, quick, 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 can't have this energy, or this sugar all floating around the blood all at once, produce a massive amount of insulin quickly, which it does. So you get this peak in insulin and this peak in blood sugar, but the peak in insulin decreases dramatically and rapidly the blood sugar by assigning the blood sugar to the various places in your body, sometimes your stomach, sometimes your ass, but if you're very lucky, into your muscles. So <laughs> your blood sugar drops very, very quickly. Now this is when the problem occurs. 
for people who are sensitive to that drop in blood sugar, you can have all sorts of different side effects. I myself suffered terribly from headaches as a result in um, a drop of blood sugar. I used to have headaches every day basically for 15 years. And I was eating a healthy diet. So when you talk about um, GI or GL, um, you're not talking about whether a food is good for you or bad for you per se. You're talking about the way in which it releases sugar into your system. So I'm going to have another video about that because this one's getting pretty long. Um, we'll talk about glycemic index, we'll talk about glycemic load, and we'll talk about um, what a low glycemic uh, GI diet is all about. Have a lovely day. I hope that was useful.